Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 28th, 2017. First up, this is uh, from my friend, I'll, I'll include several links here from my friend Robert Bangalore Bobble. He's been keeping me up to date with a uh, drone. This is a full-size human carrying drone that I've been following for quite a while too. And I'll include the two links to the YouTube videos below. I'm not going to play any of the videos because I get dinged for copyright every time I do that, but they will be down in the description box below along with the links to all the articles I'll talk about. But this one is from flyingmag.com. Volocopter completes test flight over Dubai. Now Dubai is wanting to become one of the top technology cities in the world and they're starting out doing it just right. Um, Dubai officials say they want theirs to become the world's smartest city. A project certain to help reach that goal is developing a fleet of autonomous vehicles to handle a quarter of all passenger transport by 2030. They've already started test flights in the city last year, and I believe I had that on the TDD report, that they've already done test flights with at least one person on board piloting, well, not so much piloting the craft, but, you know, semi-piloting the craft because it's also autonomous, too. He basically was just using the stick to point it where it needed to go, but I guess these flights uh, with other people on board will be totally autonomous. But it says here, following in the article, ignoring critics who scoffed at the claim earlier this year that the German-designed Volocopter, and by the way, uh, not just German-designed, uh, Mercedes-Benz is getting involved too. Uh, Daimler-Benz is uh, involved in this project big time. And they recently renamed the autonomous thing, uh, Autonomous Aerial Taxi, and it would begin testing a two-place vehicle in Dubai this year. The government of the Middle Eastern city released a video shot during the first flight of the electric aircraft. And there's a video you can play here too. The short flight conducted without passengers near the Jumeria Beach Park was attended by Dubai's Crown Prince, and I won't even try to uh, pronounce all these names. The successful flight kicked off a testing regime, regime expected to consume another five years before regular AAT service, autonomous taxi service, is expected to begin. So within five years, they'll start having some, and then uh, hopefully they're going to handle a large portion of traffic with that. The Volocopter tested in Dubai was powered by 18 individual rotors. To me, that's the main thing that they got right. The Volocopter got it right. I see a lot of these drones, and especially going up to full-size drones to carry a person, sticking with four rotors. You can't do that for stability. You lose a rotor, you're going to lose not just stability, you're going to lose enough power to be able to do anything, even if for some reason you could somehow get stability out of it. I don't know with four blades how you could, losing a blade anyway, because you lose um, the one side of one of your axis of stability. Um, but with 18 individual rotors, heck, losing one or two rotors during flight, you may not even have to do anything but just finish up the flight. And worst case scenario, you could have a soft landing anywhere where it's, uh, you know, you'd have an open field to land in. So just for the safety thing. And it has a 30-minute range, and it can travel up to 60 miles per hour without the need to battery recharge. But they say um, this is just a prototype. It will be significantly um, better when they get into the production version. So, um I think actually once it can reach like a 45 minute range at 60 miles per hour, that pretty much covers pretty much any suburban area. If you live in a suburban area outside of a city like uh, where I live outside of Chicago, just west of O'Hare Airport, that would be more than enough. That would be you know, probably twice as much range as I would need. Um, not that it would be something somebody like me could afford. I think this is probably for your more well-to-do people to be able to do this. But, you know, the other thing is is the fact, too, that even if 10 or 20% of the people are well-to-do enough to take this rather than a car, it makes it easier for the rest of us on the highway. So I still think this Volocopter is the, be the best deal going I see for the future of drones, human-scale type of drones carrying people around, is the Volocopter system. Um, they've shown nothing but, but good progress and uh, fast, too, a lot faster than expected. This next one is from nationalgeographic.com, and I'm going to have some, a few little complaints here, but first let me just read the article here, and it's titled, First Rock from Outside the Solar System Sails Past Earth. Astronomers are stunned to see the first known object flung through our cosmic neighborhood from interstellar space. And the name of it is A2017U1, and it's most likely from interstellar origin just because of the fact that it's coming from, um, well, it's already come down straight um, to the side of the sun, it's dipped below the sun, and then it's come up near Earth, and right now it's between Earth and Mars, and it's going to be traveling outside of our solar system. It's traveling at such a rate of speed, too, that there's no way our sun is going to capture it, so it's just going to be a, a one-time event. But um, I'll read you a little bit of the article here. Astronomers around the world are scrambling to study an object unlike anything we've ever seen, a chunk of rock and ice seemingly fired our way from another solar system. Discovered on October 19th, 
The object is several hundred feet across and is currently speeding away from us at more than 98,000 miles an hour. At that speed, the space rock is moving fast enough to outrun the sun's gravitational tug, implying that it was never part of our solar system to begin with. The find marks a historic find for astronomers studying how stars and planets form. Scientists had long expected the process of planetary formation, resulting from tr chunks of ice and rock that, when given a nudge, could be flung into interstellar space. In previous surveys, they had seven seen hints of this kind of interstellar material in the form of dust-sized particles. Uh, it's the first interloper of appreciable size that has flowed through our cosmic neighborhood. I would give a, that's not a logical scientific statement. It's not the first one that's flown through, I'm sure. Our um, solar system has been in existence for uh, over a billion years easily, so I'm sure others have. It's just this is the first one we've noticed, so that's my little idea about them. And especially coming from National Geographic, I expect it better than this, but oh well, you know, my, my small complaint. They said the object could give scientists an unprecedented, if fleeting, opportunity to stare straight at the leftovers of an alien planet. Well, at least you get maybe not leftovers of an alien planet, but at least um, something that could have formed a planet in another solar system, but for some reason was flung out and didn't get the chance to. So, um, Next up, and this is even, the only reason I'm even getting into this is because it was in the science section of the news for Google. And just like I have a little complaint with the National Geographic complaint uh, saying, claiming that this uh, is the first of an interstellar object coming through our solar system rather than saying exactly it's the first one we've noticed. Um, this just, to me, it's over the edge. It's from express.co.uk. Shot claim Nibiru, Nibiru is being covered up by the Vatican and then it gets into all, I'll just I'll just read a little bit of this, but it's it's almost totally ridiculous. Pope Francis is aware of the planet known as Nibiru and its powers and is keeping it a secret from the world, according to the new theory. U.S. Nibiru expert C.J., who declined to reveal his surname, hmm, declined to reveal his surname, how interesting, claims the Vatican is among a group of elite leaders involved in suppressing information about the planetary system. Um, the only thing they didn't mention in here was the Illuminati. Speaking exclusively to the Express, CJ said they are controlling everything from behind the scenes. The Vatican has known about it for centuries and is written in the Book of Revelation. So um, they say uh, next month in uh, November, this new Peru is going to come in and create earthquakes and all kinds of things like that. And they never anywhere in the article give any other view other than from this uh, semi-anonymous CJ fellow all the way to the end of the article. I will give credit. The other link that they, they had on Google Science about this was from... Um, the mirror and I will give credit to the mirror because if you actually read the mirrors article all the way to the end of the article they actually give credit and uh, give some uh, information from NASA itself saying that basically the whole thing is a hoax so I will give the mirror the mirror the credit although the first part of their uh, article um, talks about what theories this is based on and some of the crazy theories and stuff and like this but um, they actually uh, uh, at the end of the article, I'll read it here. Nibiru and other stories about wayward planets are an internet hoax. There is no factual basis for these claims. If Nibiru or Planet X were real and headed for an encounter with the Earth, astronomers would have been tracking it for at least the past decade, and it would be visible by now to the naked eye. Obviously, it does not exist. So I will give the mirror credit, but why they even bother to uh, list this in the first place as uh, something being science or even sort of close to science, I have no idea. And I will also include a link from astronomy.com. Um, there's this, our close call with an alien probe, and they put alien uh, probe in quotes. Uh, I, I guess, you know, just like everything else, the science magazines and the uh, astronomy.com and places like that, they have to go with a little, they think they have to go with a little bit of drama to get the public interested enough to read the article. So I guess they, they believe they have to put that in the headlines so that somebody will read and uh, hope to find it. The aliens have actually launched a probe and it's come to our area. I'm not saying it's it's impossible that it ever will happen, but uh, it's uh, so unlikely I would not get your hopes up in any way, shape, or form. So anyway, that's it for the stories. I am going to put my pictures up of the progress of my plants here. My uh, Anybody that's following me on my lettuce farm, this is what the plants are looking like now. Um, to me, they're not really growing quite as much as I would expect compared to what I've seen on YouTube. Of course, then again, Remember, um, I, I appreciate those of you that have given me help with helpful hints like uh, put some grow lights on it and stuff like that. But the whole purpose of this experiment that I'm doing is to do it with the least effort possible. All I intend to do is put them in good soil, plant the seeds in good soil, and water them on a regular basis and keep them near a south-facing, well-lit window. 
and see what's going to happen. If I have to do anything besides that, like uh, invest in grow lights or hydroponic system or special feeding systems, I'm not interested. That's not the purpose of my experiment. The purpose of my experiment is to do it in the easiest way possible with the less effort possible and see what I get out of it. So um, looking at the plants right now, I would say they're probably at least a week or two behind uh, any anything any possibility of harvesting anything. I think some of the others that I've seen on YouTube, people have gotten them close in three weeks, but that's using a lot of extra equipment, a lot of extra effort, which I don't want to do. Um, four weeks, they tend to always be able to. I don't think another week from now, it's going to be close to that. I'm looking at my best guess is five to six weeks from now. But hey, we're still making progress. You can see by the the you know by the way they looked that they've gotten their first true all of them have gotten their first true leaves. They just have one plant per container, and we'll just go from there and see how they do. So, anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.